Born in Orlando, Oklahoma in 1911, Gus Friedemann was one of 12 children. Gus attended school in Stillwater. Using a variety of transportation to get to classes, he usually rode his bicycle, but on rainy days, he rode his horse, Ribbon. Gus graduated from Stillwater High School in 1930 at the age of 19, and a year later started teaching. Over the years, Gus received bachelor's and master's degrees from Oklahoma State University by taking classes during the summer. His first teaching assignment was at Quay, and he later moved to Stillwater schools where he taught typing, shorthand, and bookkeeping. He initiated the distributive education program in Stillwater High School in 1949 and was the first and only teacher coordinator until his retirement in 1976. Many of Gus's former distributive education students went on to become administrators in the state career tech system. His protégés include the late Bruce Gray, former superintendent at Francis Tuttle, Dr. Tom Friedemann, deputy superintendent at Francis Tuttle, Leon Linton, former assistant superintendent of Moore Norman Technology Center, Dr. Leo Presley, former assistant state director at the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education, and John Friedemann, former coordinator of the Curriculum and Instructional Materials Center at the State Department. After retiring, Gus practiced the principles he learned in marketing education, selling prearranged burial policies for Strode Funeral Home of Stillwater. Gus never really retired. He just redirected his priorities. Ladies and gentlemen, please salute Gus Friedemann, educator, mentor, and businessman. Several years ago, Robert Fulgham wrote a book titled, All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. This evening, I'd like to play on that notion a little bit and relate to you that all I really needed to know in my professional life, I learned in Uncle Gus's DE classroom. Let me take you back to the days when there was a program called Distributive Education with a student organization called DECA. There's Uncle Gus with that ever-present smile, always in coat and tie, and a firm commitment to students that you could just feel from the bottom of your soul. Today's education buzzwords were just business as usual in Uncle Gus's DE classroom. We were learning quality principles from Uncle Gus way before anybody in education knew anything about Deming or the Malcolm Baldrige Award. It's all about serving customers better than your competitors, he would constantly drill into our young minds. And you do it with class, and you do it with style. I'm not exactly sure how DE was viewed in other towns and high schools across the state, but in Stillwater, Oklahoma, there was a waiting list just to get into the program, and another waiting list for employers to hire his students. The program, uh, <clears throat> the waiting lists were always there because of Uncle Gus innovations, like, for instance, the creation of the Cats Department Store Fashion Panel, which involved some of Stillwater High School's most beautiful junior and senior girls. Trust me, I was there. <laughs> they, uh, they would serve as fashion models for fashion shows throughout the town, and in this way, we could be involved in community events, and more local merchants could get the benefit of the DE program. Once again, we talk about partnerships in education today like it was something brand new. But in Uncle Gus's DE classroom, it was just the way you get things done. Mr. Friedemann, as everyone else had to call him, also had a unique knack for getting the students to do things we thought were way beyond our ability, whether it was running for a DECA office, taking on a new responsibility at our job training site, or whatever. He would always say, never let being afraid keep you from doing something. Just say yes, and then you'll figure out a way to get it done. Uncle Gus truly believed that sometimes you just had to leap and then grow your wings on the way down. A scary thought for insecure high school juniors and seniors, but we also, uh, we always seem to find a way to fly with eagles. I can't tell you how many times that uh, that very thought still comes to my mind when I'm in the middle of tackling something that's just really difficult and literally scares me to death. And then I can hear this little voice saying, now Tommy, it's not that big a deal. You can do it, by golly. And then there was the DECA parent employer employee banquet. Now you talk about a big deal. This was one of the social events of the year in Stillwater. We had it right here in this very ballroom. And Frank, I think we probably had at least as many people here that are in here this evening. 
uh, the president of OSU, uh, the Stillwater mayor, and many local legislators were just a few of the dignitaries that would be in attendance. Then, of course, there were the parents, the students, and employers. And we all funded this out of, uh, Uncle Gus used to like to say, you know, you're getting paid for that uh, on-the-job training you're doing, so you, put, you pay for your parent, you pay for your employer. All funded by us. We were on the, if you were on the program, the guys wore tux and the girls wore formals. We crowned our deck a queen and even had one of our own students do the Burt Parks thing and sing, here she comes, our new deck a queen. Well, <laughs> while she was escorted down the aisle, followed by her attendants and their escorts. And of course, we had to organize the whole thing ourselves. Learning to work in teams was nothing new to students in Uncle Gus's Deaton classroom. And finally, there's Uncle Gus's sense of humor. I really think that's what kept us engaged in the classroom. Learning the principles of sales and marketing can be interesting in itself if you have a gifted instructor like Uncle, like Uncle Gus, but it was especially enjoyable coming from someone who kept you entertained. I have to tell you this one story I've heard Leo Presley tell a dozen times about Uncle Gus and what happened to Leo uh, when he was in the program. You know, it's a law that every year, every teacher has to have one student that tries your patience to the absolute maximum every day. And this year, it was a student named John. It wasn't Cousin John, this was another John. Uh, after, after one of those particularly trying days, good humor and all, Mr. Friedemann apparently had had it and landed into John and said, you know, John, I just really don't know what happened to you. Your dad is one of my best friends, a respected and admired businessman in Stillwater. He's active in the chamber, the Downtown Merchants Association, gives unselfishly to charitable organizations. He's just a real pillar of the community. It has to be a big disappointment to him to have a son like you who just constantly wants to have fun and goof off all the time. Then in a mild application of humor, Uncle Gus said, you know, I bet I know what happened. I bet they made a mistake at the hospital. And when you were born, they gave your mom and dad the wrong baby. Yeah, that's gotta be it. You were switched. And now I feel all better having rationalized all of that. And without missing a beat, John looked up and just quickly replied, you know, Mr. Friedemann, that does make a lot of sense. And I bet you're exactly right. I bet I'm really your son. <laughs> Leo says that's the only time he ever saw Mr. Friedman at a loss for words. <laughs> well, as you can probably already see by now, Uncle Gus was truly more than just an amazing teacher. He was a mentor to some of our greatest leaders in career and technology education, including someone who was a dear friend of many of us here tonight, Bruce Gray. Bruce had a bunch of Uncle Gus stories too, and I wished he were here to share them with us. Bruce, we all miss you dearly. But there were numerous others as well who weren't mentioned in that video. Susan Katz, Susan Prater, Judy Johnson are some that come to mind, not to mention the many successful leaders in business and industry who all got their start in Uncle Gus's DE classroom. You know, there's a lot that's been said and written about the strength of our career tech system here in Oklahoma and how on a regular basis we have visitors from all over the world who come here to study it in an attempt to duplicate our success. But let me submit to you this evening that the proud reputation we enjoy today was earned on the backs of those day-to-day, -day, lifelong teachers who resisted the temptation to leave the classroom for the higher salaries offered by administrative positions or from jobs in the private sector and chose instead to fine-tune their teaching skills for the pure love of helping young people become better older people. They never burned out and thank God our system had them. Teachers like my Uncle Gus who I am proud to present to you this evening as an inductee into this year's Voltec Hall of Fame. Accepting this honor for Uncle Gus is his son, my cousin, Frank Friedemann. Golly, it doesn't seem that long ago when I was up here doing this for a DECA banquet. <laughs> I was scared then, too. I do want to graciously accept this great honor from the Oklahoma Vocational Technical foundation for my dad. I only wish he were here to accept this tremendous honor in person. If dad were here, I do know, or at least I have a feel of what he would say. First of all, he would come up to this podium right here. 
And the first thing you'd see is that big, infectious smile that he has on his face. And he'd come up here, and he'd tell you with great humility that he was, the, he was only really doing his job in a profession that he dearly loved. And he really, really didn't deserve the honor. As Tom said, though, he's kind of a kid or two. He would also say, however, as long as I'm here and you're out there, <clears throat> My dad left quite an impression on the people he shared his life with. He was always upbeat. If he ever worried or was feeling a bit ill or sick, you would never know it. You didn't know it in our household. He loved life and he lived it to his fullest potential. In addition to being a great husband, father, uncle, brother, and grandfather, true family man, there were a few little things that, or little known facts that uh, you probably really did know about him. One is he really loved music and he, and he supported the art in every which way. He loved all types of music. He had a great singing voice and he was an accomplished musician. He played the violin and the banjo and he played for a little band on WKY radio called Pop Moore's Oklahomans. Yet he always took a back seat when it came to honoring his children and grandchildren in their musical talents. My dad believed in the American dream and the free enterprise system. Because of his love of youth, my dad encouraged generations of young people to be positive and to capitalize on their gifts. He empowered them and their empowered them and their future with inspiration and motivation. He believed that they could be successful in any profession down that path of life as long as they were willing to work hard for something they really truly believed in. He told me that people never know how long it takes you to do something. They only know how well it was done. My family wants you to know how proud they are of Gus W. Friedemann, my advisor, mentor, my hero, my friend, my dad. <laughs>